Zion's vision is that everyone is connected in the context of community. In this season, which has restricted our ability to come together corporately, being connected is more important than ever. Life Talks is intended to address the disconnect. For six weeks, we are suspending our normal small group activity so that all ZBC members and friends can connect in these weekly forums. Life in general can be tricky, but this year, with two major crises, COVID-19 and racial injustice taking center stage, life has become trickier than ever to navigate. With this as the backdrop, the church declares that the answers to everything we question, the plan for the journey we take, and the correct decision for every situation is the Lord and His Word. Life Talks is the intentional environment we are creating where the questions can be asked, the journey can be mapped out, and the options can be weighed. Join us on Mondays at 7 p.m. for special sessions for couples and singles. For couples, discover and practice the how-tos of healthy communication these live talks are for married, engaged, and seriously dating couples. Is being single just a season, or is it a life sentence? Do you view singleness as God's plan or His punishment? Is it possible to be single and satisfied? Let's talk about it. On Thursdays at 7 p.m., join us for special sessions for men and women. Men are faced with pressure at work, responsibility at home, and injustice in society. Life Talks for Men is the safe place to talk, share, and be sharpened. Wife, mother, student, leader. Women have many roles and many frustrations. In Life Talks for Women, learn, navigate, and appreciate these roles while prioritizing self-care. Please visit www.zbcmarietta.org to register. Good morning. Welcome to Zion Baptist Church here at 165 Lemon Street in Marietta, Georgia, where our pastor is Pastor Eric M. Beckett. We want to welcome you this morning to the worship service one day after we celebrated the 4th of July. We want to say again to you, God is good. He is merciful. His truth endures forever. He has blessed us immeasurably. We cannot count all the things the Lord has done for us. So we have come this morning out of an attitude of gratitude. We've come to worship Him. We've come to praise His holy and righteous name. We've come to give Him credit for all that He's done in our lives. As we look back over our lives and consider all that could have happened and all that should have happened, and yet God in His mercy decided to keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. He allowed us to be here. We're not more mindful of the fact that many have lost loved ones. We're not unmindful that many are going through right now. But what we say to you that you can hold on to God's unchanging hand. For God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. When we drew our first breath, he was there. This morning when we got up, he was there. Right now, where we breathe and the breath is still in our body, he is here. And if we seek to follow the same God that has kept us down through the years, he will be the one that will sustain and keep us. Where's 
with uh, welcome to our online listening audience, viewing audience. Uh, it's good to us. We praise God for this opportunity to share in worship on this first Sunday in July. As I already mentioned, let's continue to keep our nation in prayer, our world in prayer with all that is going on. Please feel free to join us daily on our prayer line Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7.14 a.m. We need prayer and we need to continue in prayer as a church family. Amen. Just 14 minutes every morning. Let's continue to give God the honor he deserves. Let's continue to trust God and pray together. The information is on the screen. Please also uh, join us. We're beginning this week a special Life Talk series that was talked about uh, earlier in the announcements in the first part of this uh, service for couples, for men, for singles, for women. Please take up the six-week challenge uh, this summer that God might continue to bless us to grow in his word, to grow in our relationships, to grow in our relationship with God. Please register for that. It begins on Monday with our couples and our singles. Couples, let's take up the challenge. We're going to have to do some homework assignments together at home. And singles, there are some awesome, awesome dynamic topics and some real issues to deal with, as well as for our men and our women on Thursdays. We continue to continue to say we thank God the doors of the church are always open. Uh, we actually have our class one-on-one -on -one for our new members coming up Wednesday. I believe it's July 7th, or 8th, whatever that day may be. And we thank God that God is still in the soul-saving business. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as Lord said, it, please feel free to call. Reach out to the church. The number uh, will be presented to you. If you'd like to be a member of Zion Baptist Church as well, you can call and reach out to the information that will be provided. We'd love to have you a part of the family of God here at Zion. We want to make sure that you are connected even in the midst of this uh, coronavirus shutdown situation with plenty of offerings online, opportunities to connect and trust God together. Also, please be sure to sign up for Realm to keep up with the latest information here at the church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for your contributions thus far for our Liberia mission. We've been blessed to a sponsor to help co-sponsor a school in uh, Liberia. A number of us were able to travel there in the early part of March. And given this uh, situation, it's certainly uh, more dire uh, for our brothers and sisters in Liberia than it is for us. But we have an opportunity to be a tremendous blessing However, the Lord enables you to give. We are attempting to purchase uh, rice uh, for families. They don't have electricity. They don't have running water. Of course, that means they don't have refrigeration. And so their situation is, 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 is more difficult than ours. But let's be a blessing. We can purchase a bag of rice for $30 or so that can feed a family for a couple of months. And so we're inviting everyone, every member of Zion, to please make that contribution. For us, $30 can be one meal at a restaurant, and how God can use us sacrificing the cost of one meal at a restaurant to be a blessing to a family in need. All of those donations will be 100% direct contribution to the ICF Mission of Hope uh, in Liberia. So let's be a blessing for that as we're preparing to bless God through our offering, our offering, our tithes and our offerings. You can give online through Realm, through the church website. If you give it to Liberia, there is an option for you to give to Liberia. But we give because God has been good to us. We give in celebration of the fact that God has continued to supply all our needs according to his riches. Not according to what we do or don't have, but according to his riches. And so we say thank you to God. We demonstrate our faith. We demonstrate our trust in our God through our giving. This is our opportunity to represent to God our tangible faith, our tangible trust. That even in this season, I believe you, God. I depend on you. I recognize you that without you, I would not have anything. But you are our source and you are our supply. We praise you for our tithes, 10%, and our offerings even in this season. You can give by text, you can give by mail, 
all the, all the options are presented to you. You can see it on the screen as well.
you have made ways for us that we never could have imagined. Give us the strength to trust you in this season. Have your way, bless your word. May it find good soil in our hearts. We thank you for what you have brought us through. We thank you for what you have brought us out of. And we thank you for where you are bringing us to. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Instruct us in your ways. Encourage us. Challenge us. Move us to the place you would have us to be. I wish you serve behind the cross of Calvary. We pray for salvation, deliverance, transformation. May it result from your word. Amen. Amen. We turn to the book of Deuteronomy. Fifth book of the Bible, chapter 11. The last book of the Pentateuch. We begin at the first verse. Amen. Moses is writing and speaking to the people of Israel. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God. Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments and commandments always. Know today that I do not speak with your children who have not known and who have not seen the chastening of the Lord your God, his greatness and his mighty hand and his outstretched arm, his signs and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to all his land. And what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and their chariots, and he made the waters of the Red Sea overflow them as they pursued you. And how the Lord destroyed them to this day. What he did for you in the wilderness until you came to this place. And what he did to Dothan and Abiram, the sons of Eli and the sons of Reuben. How the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up. Their households, their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all of Israel. But your eyes have seen every great act of the Lord which he did. Down to verse 16. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Lest the Lord's anger be, anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain, the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly in the good land which the Lord has given you. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. Bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children. Speaking of them when you sit in the house, your house, when you walk by the way when you lie down and when you rise up you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them like the days of the heavens above the earth. Amen. Verse 2, he says, Know today that I do not speak with your children who have not known and who have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness and his mighty hand and his outstretched arm. I want to talk to us today on this July 4th weekend holiday on the subject passing the torch. Passing the torch. Moses, the reputed author of the Pentateuch, is well advanced in years. He's now approaching 120 years of age. 
Moses' life would be divided into three segments. First 40 years, he was born and grew up in Egypt, raised in Pharaoh's household by Pharaoh's daughter. His mother served as nanny. And then up to the age of 40, he lived in Egypt until he murdered an Egyptian, fled exiled to a place called Midian, where there he resided for another 40 years. It was near the age of 80 that God called Moses to become the leader of the people of Israel to deliver them out of the slavery of Egypt. And Moses answered the call of God and he was used by God as God led Israel out from under the bondage of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. In the last 40 years of Moses' life, he spent wandering in the wilderness. The story of Moses depicted in this Pentateuch, the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy tell the story of Moses. Moses is now nearing the end of his life. He does not have much time left to live. He has led the nation of Israel as far as he can lead them. Now it is time for him to pass the torch. Nearly every last one of his peers, Moses' peers, his age, is already gone. And so my brothers and sisters, Moses has an assignment after leading God's people out of the wilderness. His longtime assistant, who is no longer so young, a younger man by the name of Joshua, Moses is charged with the task of passing the torch to Joshua and the Joshua generation. The reality of us all, my brothers and sisters, is that we are not going to be here forever. For those of us who may be in the 40 and 50 plus category in particular, we are on the other side of the hill. And it is most likely that we have less time in front of us than we do behind us. Our time is winding up. There is a generation who is coming behind us. And as great, awesome, wise, and intelligent as we may be, sophisticated as we may be, the fact is that us on that other side of the hill will not be here forever. And the fact is that we cannot go on to what we have today. It is good that we are leaders and we have the skill, the expertise, and the experience. We have the knowledge. We've been doing what we've been doing for a long time. But if we pay attention to our young folks, they have potential, they have promise, they have gifts, they have intelligence. And if we can get over ourselves, if we can get over our egos, uh, my brothers and sisters, at some point we've got to realize that we've got to pass the torch to the next generation. Because the fact is that we cannot stay the same way forever. We must recognize that times do change. We must change. And that as great as we may be, the fact is that, that, that what we did in the past becomes outdated in the present at some points. I feel like y'all are quiet on me online. I can't hear nothing. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we have to realize that we have to move on and move aside. We have to move ourselves out of the way. And if we choose not to move ourselves out of the way, the fact is that eventually, voluntarily or involuntarily, God will move us out of the way. None of us can last forever. Are y'all with me here? My brothers and sisters, an important part of the process is passing the torch. We have a generation coming behind us, our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, the younger 
generation. They, they are different. They have a different way of thinking. They have a different way of doing things. They have a different way of processing things. The millennials and the generation C will carry on after us. Are you with me here? And so, so we all not wait until the torch has been tied out and diminished before we pass it on. Pass on what? Text here. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy means the second, second law. The book of Deuteronomy is a, is a recitation of the law for the sake of the new generation. If you read through the Bible and you read chronologically through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, when you get to Deuteronomy, you realize that it is repeating itself. It is repeating the story of what just happened just a little while earlier in Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers. And the reason why it is repeating itself, the story of just how a few years ago God delivered the Israelites from slavery in Egypt and they walked through the miracle and the story of their struggles and their mistakes and their trials and their tribulations and how they wandered in the wilderness. The reason it is a repeat is because Moses is reciting it for the new generation. So he says in verse 2, remember today that your children were not the ones who saw and experienced. And so the purpose of, of, of Deuteronomy is to recite the same story for the sake of those who are coming forward in the new generation. Moses is telling the story of Israel to his own people. Are y'all with me here? They, they, they needed to hear the miracles, my brothers and sisters, and how the, the, the young folks needed to hear about the deliverance and also about the difficulties that the previous generation had experienced. My brothers and sisters, the rest of the generation was dying out in the wilderness, in the desert, and before Moses dies, he dictates the Deuteronomy. He highlights the history, he describes the details of their days in this desert. Deuteronomy is telling their testimony. Moses tells of the tales for those who were toddlers at the time who have not yet been born, who do not understand the stories. And the truth is, my brothers and sisters, that the first generation ahead of them, they were hard-headed. God himself described them as being stiff-necked, rebellious, hard-hearted and stubborn. Are y'all with me here? And so Moses is trying to pass on the torch and he speaks in verse 1 that you will love the Lord your God. He, he, he gives them what, what the heart and then he also gives them the history because the last thing he wants to see is children who are devoid of the knowledge of God. The last thing he wants to see is a generation behind us who don't realize who they are in Christ. Who don't know their history and their heritage. The last thing he wants to see, we want to see, is those who don't believe in church anymore and turn up their nose in church after they've been raised in the church. After all the church has meant in our history, the last thing we want to see is a legacy left behind of a young generation who doesn't know how to pray. The last thing we need is a young generation who is naive about racism and the ways of wickedness in this world. And so Moses has to talk to the new generation because the first generation wouldn't listen and God needed to replace them. God told them that every last 20 y'all, 20 years or older, who were counted in that census, the 600,000 men would die before they ever reached that promised land. And one by one, they counted off funeral after funeral after funeral because they would not believe God in order to move out of that wilderness and get into the promised land. And God decided that he was not going to drag anybody into the destiny that he had for them. God 
is not going to pull and push anybody into the promised land. Nobody, nobody had reserved seats for the promised land and nobody did that even Moses did not have a reservation. If you don't want to go, if you don't want to do what God called you to do, God is not in the business of pampering powders. And so God waited the old generation out one by one, funeral after funeral, because God is not in a hurry. God has more time than we do. A thousand days is as a year, a thousand, a, a thousand years is as a day, and one day is as a thousand years in the sight of God. And so he waited for babies to be born that would believe in his blessing. was a little more naive than us who are so knowledgeable. A little more gullible than us who are so great. Find somebody who will be crazy enough to believe God at his words. God will sometimes wait us out. Leave us alone. We are replaceable. God will put somebody else in. Are you with me here? Somebody else who doesn't have to pull their teeth just to agree to God's plan. Somebody else who won't have to battle with in order to bring them into his blessings. God has so much more for the first generation, but they weren't ready. God was not going to waste God's time on somebody who can't figure out whether they want to have faith to follow, whether they want to fool around. So Moses tells them to make sure y'all pass this on to the next generation, this story. I'm going to tell y'all about because the old generation, they were doubtful, they were negative, they were critical, they were whiners, they were complainers, they were moaners, they were murmurers, they were ingrates, they were backstabbers. The people of God ended up wandering in that wilderness for circles for 40 years in confusion. God said, I got some new love. God came to a point where God said, you know what, let's move on. Get me somebody who's not going to be so stuck in their ways and so stubborn. A new generation not stuck on status quo, not rooted in racism, not proud and prejudice as their parents. A new generation not afraid to speak out and stand up. A new generation sensitive to social justice. This book of Deuteronomy, Moses recites to them their history. And here it is, my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this July 4th Independence Weekend. Make sure you understand that, that, that Moses is telling the history of the Israelites. Make sure you understand that, that you have your own history. And you can never afford to let somebody else tell your story. Your story is your story. And everybody else's story is everybody else's story. Nobody can tell the story for you. Moses said they wandered around in circle for 40 years. And, and, and you got to know your history so you don't repeat your history. This July 4th holiday weekend, this nation celebrates. It was on July 2nd, 1776, the Continental Congress voted in favor of independence from Great Britain. Right, it was two days later, on July 4th, that the 13, dele the 13 colonies had delegates to adopt yes. the Declaration of Independence. Yes. Document drafted by Thomas Jefferson. Yes. And now it's celebrated every year across the United States as the birth of American independence yes. with festivities. The Star Spangled Bag. But my brothers and sisters, we have a sweet, we, we, our history now has to reckon with the reality that July 4th was anything but independence. 
for everybody. On July 5, 1852, Frederick Douglass gave a keynote address at an Independence Day celebration and asked, what to the slaves is the 4th of July? He said, I say it with a sad sense of the disparity between us, but I am not included with the pale of your glorious anniversary. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, but I must mourn. And today, across this nation in 2020, there are this protests around. We are now reckoning with the reality that July 4th, 1776, was only a day of freedom for a segment of American society. Those of us in Ebony Hue carried across the transatlantic in slave ships, our story is a completely different story than others. But bless God, I do got to acknowledge we do have a story to tell that nobody else can tell. And no offense to the Star Spangled Banner, we thank God for being a part of this nation. We're certainly not trying to be disrespect disrespectful, but we got our own song. Tell our own story. James Bowen Johnson said it in what's called the Negro National Anthem, stone it. The road will be tried. Thank God for the National Anthem, but now the chastening rod fell in the day that hope and born had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place on which our father sighed. We have come of a way that with tears have been watered. We have come treading a path through the blood of the slaughter. Now from the gloomy past till now we can stand at last where the white gleam of our star is cast. I said we do have our song. No offense to anybody else, but we got our own song. We can lift every voice and we can sing. To love and heaven ring with the harmonies of liberty. Oh, come on, somebody, we still let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling seas. We sing a song full of faith that the dark past has taught us. A song full of hope that the present has brought Let us march on until victory is won. I said, we got our own story. We got a story of how we got over. How I made it over. You know my soul looks back and wonders. How did I make it over? Go on over all these years. You know my soul looks back and wonders. How did I make it over? The hell you said, tell me. I made it over. I've been falling, rising all these years. But you know, my soul got to look back and wonder how we made it over. But soon as I can see Jesus, y'all ain't saying nothing. It wouldn't be the man that died for me, man that bled and suffered on on Calvary. I want to thank him. I don't mean no offense, you might see some folk who don't stand for the Star Spangled Banner. Don't get too offended by it. Sometimes we just got to kneel, and our kneeling is not to offend anybody, but it's to acknowledge that I got to thank God and God alone. Give him the glory. Thank him for how he brought me.
We've been here, we've been here. Now don't get it twisted. We was here in 1776 now. Started coming over in the boat in 1619. We was here. It was on our backs that this nation was built. Now folks run wide and complain today about cheap labor from China. And unfair competitive edge. Forgetting the fact that it was cheap labor on the brutal system built on the backs of slaves that this nation was built. And so today we gotta talk about our story. Textbooks in the classroom growing up excluded our story, revised our story, edited our story, omitted our story, denied our story, lied about our story, covered up our story. But Moses said, I'm going to write this story so that it's passed on to the next generation. We need to tell our story unabridged, unedited, without being sugar-coated, without being compromised, concealed, or conciliatory. The story that has some darkness and some difficulties, oppression and depression, but a history also of resilience and brilliance, strength and determination, faith, love, forgiveness, a history of a God who never left us. History like Israel of a God who heard our cries and delivered us. Thank God for America. We are part of the fabric and fiber of this nation. It was upon the backbone of slaves that this nation was built. Found the land, grew their food, picked their food, cooked their food. Great great grandmothers raised their children. We have a history of success, a history of prosperity, a history of increase that have been muted occasionally by the murderous rage of an oppressive majority. And so we need to know our history so that you know who you are. You need to know your history so you know who you came from. You need to know your history so you need to know what you're capable of achieving. That you're not God, not inferior. Need to know that you are capable of overcoming great challenges. You come from a people who built universities. You come from a people who lived, who, who, who built this country. We have great inventors. Garrett Morgan invented the three traffic like Lewis Latimer, the son of a runaway slave, built the longer lasting carbon filament of the light bulb. George Washington Carver does, designed the virus of water. Mary, Marie, Marie Van Britten Brown, the first ever home security system. Madam C.J. Walker, specialized hair products for black women. Yeah, yeah. with me here, the world of this United States economy into world power was carried on the blacks of ancestors ancestors through the whole cotton industry. Universities like Georgetown and Harvard and Brown and Yale were built off the finances from the work of slaves. African Americans achieved tremendous success just a few short years out of slavery during the Reconstruction period. Churches like Zion Baptist Church were formed and came into existence. Churches created colleges and they made schools and they were empowered. And because of the 15th Amendment and the right to vote, we have 16 congressmen in the United States of America before the 20th century because of the right to vote. We had over 2,000 representatives in leadership across this nation. We've had a history of three steps forward and two steps backwards. Just like the story of the Israelites when Egypt and Pharaoh saw that the people were still prospering and they were increasing, Pharaoh decided that he would try and wipe out every firstborn male of the Hebrew race. And so it's been for every advancement that we've had in this nation. There has been opposing aggression to stifle our progress. And our people need to know our history of why we are where we are right now. Folks intimidated and threatened by black enfranchisement and excellence in the area of reconstruction. White supremacists attempted to enforce subordination through violence, lynching, and Jim Crow laws. 
got to leave that alone. We may not fool ourselves today by some of the stifling policies that we are now seeing crop up after a black president came to power. And folks realize that that was a problem now. We are dealing with the subtle racism, but still racism in full force. Denial of health care, xenophobic treatment of immigrants, elimination of DACA, reversal of nearly every executive order of the 44th president, a backlash of stifling policies. We should understand this is not the first time in history this has happened. Redistricting, denying of voter rights, the Tulsa massacre, 300 people killed, 35 blocks destroyed. But praise God, we are the people of resilience. No man can stop. Moses takes his sweet time through the entire book of Deuteronomy. He leaves no stone unturned. He does not hide the history. He does not cover up the truth. He does not miss their mistakes. He tells it all. The good, the bad, the ugly. One of the greatest gifts we can give to our next generation is the story of our struggles. The testimony of our tough times. One of the most important things we can do is hand down our history. Tell the next generation about our victories, but also tell them about our valleys. Tell them about the glory, but also tell them your story behind the glory. Don't let them forget. Tell them your story so that when it gets a little tough for them, they will not quit and walk away and get lazy and leery just because they face a little test. Because if you don't tell your story, if they, they will think you always had it easy. And they'll start to think that they are supposed to have it easy. Are y'all with me here? The scripture here tells us that the young people did not know. They did not see the deliverance from Egypt. They did not know about the slavery. They did not see any of this stuff. And so Moses needs to tell them the entire history in this book of Deuteronomy. And we should understand that our young people have not seen and do not know what you know about Jim Crow segregation and the lynchings and the racism at the back of the bus and the color all in bathrooms. They never saw Malcolm X of the March on Washington. They never heard the I Have a Dream speech. They never saw the chain games and the venomous hatred and racial racism, the murder of Emmett Till, the Birmingham bombing that killed the four girls. But don't you allow them to forget our history. Yeah, what they? Y'all with me here? Don't let them forget how you were raised. Your parents didn't have much, but you made it. Grandma and grandpa made it with nine kids on $15 a week in a two-bedroom ranch house. Then maybe I can make it. Don't let them forget that you had two or three jobs to raise your kids all by yourself. Somehow your kids got through college. So when it comes their turn to raise their kids, they won't cry and think that it's impossible. Are you with me here? If you don't tell them, they will never know. How back in the day, mama had no insurance, had no medicine. Back in those days, there were no antibiotics, but there was castor oil. Are you with me here? There was no Robitussin and no Vicks Formula 44, but there was honey and whiskey. Mama had her own pharmacy and you made it. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Tell them about how much you didn't have, but you came out just fine. Talk about how you go, how you have to go into the back and get your own dinner out in the yard. Go and get the hog and grab the chicken. chicken. That was your stuff about for the evening. Y'all folks don't know about hard times. They don't know about government cheese. Got iPhones and iPads and cell phones and know about Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. They know algebra and, and Max, but they don't know about making it with nothing. They don't know about making it through hard times. They don't know about sleeping in the same bed with four of your family members. Tell them about your history. Praise God today. We got streaming church and the word network and we got church with hammer organs and keyboards and padded pews and air conditioning. But tell them how you had church when you had real church and all you had was the Holy Ghost and that was enough. Are you with me here? Tell them about your history about Fannie Lou Hamer and Harriet Tubman, Mary McLeod 
Alabama through Rosa Parks, Coretta, Scott King, Michelle Obama, strong black women. Tell them what they'll have to go through. Tell them so they won't be spoiled around whiners and complainers and crybaby when life get too hard. Are y'all with me here? Lord help us, Moses told the first generation y'all to was a stiff neck and a rebellion. Now he said, I want you to tell your story on that right. You ain't never done nothing. You were stiff necked. Don't rewrite your wrongs and don't erase your errors and don't, don't cover up your problems. Don't, don't mask your mistakes. Don't forget your failures. When did you have your first child? When did your marriage, how did your first marriage turn out? How many relationships did you have before you got married? How much money did you blow through making mistakes? Tell me your story and don't pretend your purpose. Don't act like you've never done anything. You said, y'all was hard-hearted, rebellious. But tell me your story so that the next generation will know the Lord will make a way. Tell them your struggles so that they'll know the Lord can fix anything and fix anybody. Tell them the pain you pretended but was no problem so your kids wouldn't see you cry. And they wouldn't know how bad it really was. Tell them about the feet, the feet that you had to deal with. Obstacles you had to overcome. But can somebody give God praise and say, I made it over. There's a story. There's a story behind the glory. Are y'all with me here? I feel like I'm running out of time here. I feel like I'm running out of time. Somebody has a past. But thank God for your past. Thank God for what he brought us through. Text says the younger generation didn't see. They didn't see all your sweat. They didn't see the years of your hard work you put in. They haven't seen all you had to go through to get to where you are now. They don't know how many nights you had to cry. There's a story behind your glory. They didn't see what it took for you to get to the edge of the promised land. You wandering in that wilderness with nothing but the same pair of shoes. But God provided manna for heaven for y'all to eat. Now the things are going better. They look at you and they don't realize what you had to go through. There's a story behind your glory. Oh, y'all with me here? Make sure they know your story that you didn't have everything you have now. Let them know the story so they'll stop thinking everything in life will be automatic for them. So they'll stop thinking that they're supposed to have everything now. There's a story behind your glory. You had to sweat. You had to cry. You had to work. You had to pray. You had to endure hardship. You had to deal with persecution, pain, prejudice, poverty, hatred, racism, in, in rejection. Make sure they don't forget the songs that you used to sing to give God praise for where you are right now. Moses wanted them to know and tell them everything. First, come tell them First Corinthians 10 13. There is no temptation, there is no trial that has taken you or seized you, but such as is common to man. Let these young folk know that what they're going through, you've already been through. Tell them that you can understand them. Tell them that it is common that they are not the only ones. Tell the pregnant teenager, tell the one who's in jail, tell the one who flunked out of school that they know that what they're going through right now is common. It's not that unusual. Tell them you know they're not by themselves. Tell the young teenage pregnant lady and young woman in, in high school wondering if they screwed up their life forever. Tell them that you made it through the wilderness. Tell them that God brought you through. Tell the one that's paddling with the bottle that God is able to deliver. That you are a witness. Let them know that there is nothing wrong that there is no trial in their life except what is common and let them know that their parents have gone through the same thing they're going through. Let them know the divorce, the disease, the abortion, the molestation, the depression, the schizophrenia, the abuse, the homosexuality. Let them know that it is common but God is faithful. God can deliver you. God can keep you. So I got to close here, I got to close here. Moses talks about their history. 
But the last thing, you make sure you tell them, don't just tell them about your problems. Don't just tell them about your own oppression. Moses said, make sure you tell them about the miracles and what your, you have seen, your eyes have seen the acts of the Lord has done for you. Make sure you don't just talk about your problems, but make sure you talk about your God and the miracles he performed in your life. Make sure you tell them how the Lord made a way out of no way. Make sure you tell them when you were hungry in that wilderness and you had nowhere to go, no grocery store, no Kroger's, no Publix, no Walmart, but you woke up in the morning and God laid down manna for y'all to eat every day. Make sure you tell them when you were going through, when you were down at the bottom, how God was the one who was faithful for you. Can I get a witness from somebody? Can anybody acknowledge what the Lord has done for you? Can somebody acknowledge that the Lord showed up to care of you? And if the Lord could take care of the previous generation, the word is everybody should understand if God could take care of us back then, then surely the Lord can do the same thing today. If he could take care of you through the dry, dusty desert, the wilderness, then surely God can take care of us today. God took care of our forefathers through slavery, through poverty, through racism, through Jim Crow segregation. If God could take care of them through the night and through the storm, through hatred and injustice, if God could take care of them through the depression, through the march on Shabbat, through the bombings and through the then surely, surely, can somebody praise God that the songwriter said, Come with me, be not dismayed, whatever be tired. Oh, Y'all know what the song says, can somebody say it? recession. Thank you for taking care of us through the pandemic. Thank you for taking care of somebody through cancer. Thank you for taking care of me through the job layoff. Thank you for watching over me through the foreclosure. Is there anybody who can give God praise for your past? And based on what the Lord has done for our past, can we give God praise for our present? Because this is the day the Lord has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it because when Moses lived 600,000 funerals took place but the Bible said Joshua and Caleb made it through because they believed God and I'm just wondering if there's anybody who will say I believe God no matter what it looks like no matter what other folk tell me I believe God He'll see us through. Put your hands together and say thank you. Put your hands together and say thank you. My time is up. My time is up. Give God the praise for seeing us through. Our invitation is still here. There may be somebody here and you'd like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And maybe you're already saved and you'd like to be a part of Zion Baptist Church. We invite you even right now to call the number post it on your screen to make it known, to make it known that you're ready to join the church of Jesus Christ. Love you. He died for you. There's nobody else that has done us like Jesus Christ has. We love for you to be a part of Zion Baptist Church right here. God loves you. God has been keeping you all the days of your life. We want you to know that whatever your story is, God is an overcomer. There's somebody here in the congregation of Zion Baptist Church who can identify with your story. But most of all, we have a Savior named Jesus Christ who is able to identify with your story. Won't you trust God even today, even in this pandemic? You may be home, you may be isolated, but God's power is able to reach us wherever we are. Won't you come in Jesus' name? Just what he said he would do.
that we're going to have a communion scripture read by Reverend Evelyn Grant, followed by our communion prayer, Reverend Randy Miller. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for what he did. Today, Lord, if we remember the bread and the wine, for his body who was broken for us and his blood which was spilled, Lord, we say that if there's anything in us that would keep us from taking this, that you would forgive us of our sins so we may partake in spirit and in truth. Bless the wine, bless the bread, and those who now remember the Lord's suffering and his death. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Let us take the bread, which represents the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Together let us eat. And the cup, which represents our Lord's blood shed on the cross of Calvary, let us drink. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God for the sacrifice our Lord made for us. Now unto him who is able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Let the people of God say together. Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. Keep the faith.